going on, guys and gals? Welcome to the year of 2024. We're going to be giving you guys our top 10 most anticipated horror movies of the year. And really excited to get into it, man. We did the uh, the live show last week, or whenever it was, talking about all the you know new releases coming out in 2024. Today, we're just talking about horror. We're going to have some things here we didn't even talk about the other day, Birdie. I'm excited about this. Dormanu, I've come the bargain. Oh, sorry, it's not that kind of time travel. My bad, dude. But yes, guys, welcome to 2024, the first, uh, well, technically second official pre-recorded video because uh, we have released our uh, 2014, which, bro, how convenient. We released our 2014 10 years later. We get to talk about most anticipated movies of 2024. That's crazy, man. That's great because I can't believe some of those. It follows. It's 10 years old now. Wow. Holy cow. Dude, man, I, I'll tell you this: it's going to be a good year from uh, back from the dead on that kind of sides of things. But you know what, folks? We're going to talk about this for most anticipated horror movies of the year 2024. What are we more excited for? But what are the most important question of all? What are you all most excited for? Let us know in that comment section down below. Without further ado, Brad, do you have any any honorable mentions? Yeah, a couple I'd like to talk about. You know, you guys know I always like to find some that. You know, maybe you guys aren't familiar with yet, or maybe you are. And they're not necessarily out ones that I'm. Out of the box. Yeah, out of the. You know, just something to be on the lookout for. Uh, you know, a bolo, if you will. You know, something to just kind of keep your keep your eyes open and, and you know be ready for you know to see more about it. Uh, a couple of these that popped up. Uh, one is called uh, Out of Darkness. Looks pretty crazy. It's going back to the Stone Age. A bunch of people in the Stone Age hanging out by a fire in the forest or something like that. Not not that it's going to be a predator per se, but it's just like, you know, that kind of that same, you know, old school new with it with a fucking monster out there. Um, so it looks cool. I, there's a trailer for it. And another one, I think it's already came out, but I think it's getting its U.S. release this year. It's called Monolith. Have you heard of this one? It's got Lily Sullivan in there from Evil Dead. Um, I think it actually came out a couple years ago in Australia or wherever it originated from. Um, but I just watched the trailer for that. It looks creepy, too. It's about this, like, podcaster who's doing an alien show, and she kind of gets sucked into some weird stuff. But it, the trailer looks like it's going to be super uh, tense and, you know, suspenseful. So I think it's going to be cool. Now, it looks like she's going to give us a good performance. Again, the movie's already out. It's just I don't think it's available yet. So... Oh, hell yeah, dude. Uh, you've already sold me with uh, freaking Lily Sullivan because of her performance as Beth in uh, The Evil Dead Rise, man. So she's going to give a rise out of us, man. So I cannot wait for that. So, Brad, I got honestly three not uh, honorable mentions here. The first one being uh, kind of cheating a little bit, at least with two of them. And I'll give you my real honorable mention. My first one being um, In Search of Darkness series. If y'all are pretty much known to that, uh, they did like a whole like three part series of the 80s covering the 80s of horror movies. This time around, they're going to be doing the 90s. So they're going to go from 19 through 1994 for this particular documentary of In Search of Darkness that's going to be coming out this year in 2024 sometime. Uh, another honorable mention, definitely got to give this to the fan film side of things. Uh, that is uh, It's Me, Billy, Chapter 2. Because the first one, uh, It's Me, Billy, Chapter 1, definitely my favorite uh, fan film movie of all time. I just feel like Dave and Bruce have just nailed exactly what a proper sequel to uh, the original classic of Black Christmas from 74, which is also getting a big anniversary this year, so fuck yeah. Uh, but man, what a better way to celebrate it than just these two guys just creating such an incredible fan film, but giving us the second and final chapter, so I'm looking forward to that. And then Brad, my real honorable mention uh, is The Strangers Chapter 1. It's this uh, the first movie of the three-part trilogy that's supposed to come out this year. Really, in the way, all three are supposed to release this year, so you kind of could combine them into one big ball. It's not really I'm looking forward to the success of this movie i just really mainly just anticipating of how potentially bad that this movie is going to be that is just what gets me curious and that is why it's an honorable mention or as some people can call it a dishonorable mention i like it okay so here's one that i'm going to get into now that again i just i don't really know much about i just kind of stumbled upon it you know trying to make this list and i'm sure some of y'all have heard of it uh because the director here is none other than m night Shyamalan's daughter ashana night Shyamalan. Uh, it's her directorial debut, uh, and it's called The Watchers. And this uh, film here uh, has Dakota Fanning and Georgina Campbell in it. Uh, you know, she's the one from Barbarian. 
Uh, now, it looks like it has that lady from Texas Chainsaw, that stupid-ass Texas Chainsaw 2022 <laughs> movie that played <laughs> S- Sally. Um, I don't know if that's her or not, but it looks like her. Uh, Olin for your for your A. Uh, but, you know, either way, um, interesting plot here. It looks cool. Um, it's, it sounds very similar to the one I mentioned earlier, but this is about, uh, you know, three people get stranded in a immaculate forest in Western Ireland. And then, you know, after they find the shelter, they, you know, become trapped alongside the, you know, the, the strangers. They're all, all three of them are strangers and they get stalked by the street, mysterious creature at night. That sounds like M. Night Shyamalan. Um, so, I mean, that sounds like something he would do. So I think it's cool to see that she's kind of fallen in his footsteps and, uh, and, and, you know, hopefully, you know, she, she, she kills it and it's a good de- debut for her. So I think it'd be really exciting. Dude, hell yeah. And dude, imagine if she, for some reason, is going to be better than her dad of M. Night Shyamalan and what freaking movies we're going to get in the future. So, uh, best of luck to Mrs., uh, or in this case, the daughter of Shyamalan. Uh, Shyamalan. Or I don't know why I can't. <laughs> yeah, whatever anyways, that is. We're go- yeah, but we're going to go ahead and number 10, though. Uh, this one is really on the download. We haven't heard much, even though just, again, the big thing is good is going to be coming out this year at some time and that's going to be the crow remake uh and this one uh a lot of people are 50 50 with this one meaning that they're really excited about this or they're not very excited about this and the director of this movie brad is rupert sanders um the only bit really big project he has done is ghosts in the shell which uh has uh scarlett johansson in it uh but other than that though this is going to be the remake of the classic from awesome that came out in 94 so again we're getting a big horror movie anniversary this year uh but bill scarscar is going to be the epic um eric uh or the crow you know with the steam mask and all that even though uh steam got its originality from um, the crow uh but I'm actually just more curious. I'm not really like super excited about this remake, but I'm not also disappointed. I'm just very curious about what direction they're going to take this remake and how much they're going to respect the original. So my number 10 is The Crow. Nice, man. Um, This next one, honestly, um, speaking of Shyamalan, let's just go ahead and speak about M. Night Shyamalan's newest film at number nine here. That's going to be Trap. We don't know anything about it, but I do know that Josh Hartnett's in it. And I love me some Josh Hartnett and his comeback that he's had over these last few years. Uh, you know, he was fantastic in Oppenheimer, was fantastic in Black Mirror. And uh, it's going to be cool to see him uh, hopefully, you know, take over this movie as well. So I'm excited to see that. Again, there's not much that's been, you know, revealed about the trap. The, I'm sorry, the the uh, the plot of said movie. It could movie. be a trap. Yeah, there was some speculation. I mean, one of the cast members is uh, from the parent trap movie, like the original one. So, mm-hmm related i don't know is it going to be similar i don't know um or is that just a quinkadink i don't know but either way uh cabin cabin uh, knock at the cabin is really good so i think you know I, i'll check this one out i'll be there for it it could suck it could be old you know it could be like old again it could be a, a shitty ass movie you never know what you're gonna get but nonetheless i'm gonna check it out dude absolutely guess who else is going to check it out brad yours truly because that's also my number <coughs> nine uh very ironically enough it's also trapped for m night Shyamalan. uh but i'll add the thing uh on top of yours brad but brad you pretty much hit all the high notes uh but this one is uh pretty much the plot is unknown like you said but a little thing we did get about this brad is it's described as a psychological thriller set at a concert that is what intrigues me what in the hell can be so thrilling and scary about a freaking concert are they trapped in a concert or is someone trapped by playing an instrument for the rest of their life what what does it mean i don't know what it means but i am excited for it and plus it like you said brad uh knock at the cabin a very high successful uh over old uh the second to last one that m night Shyamalan made so hopefully we can uh freaking go all the way up more for m night Shyamalan. so i'm excited so trap is my number nine i like it uh these next ones so those first two are kind of a gamble you know we'll see what it is these uh, seven through one here i feel pretty good about I'm, I'm actually genuinely excited for all these movies i'm sorry eight through one i should say number eight for me alien romulus uh from fide alvarez uh looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with the franchise i've heard a lot of good buzz you know a lot of good things so far i think he's really excited about it um so it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what they do you know maybe it'll be a new spin maybe a little bit different from what we've seen as of late um and i like the cast i don't know him all too well, but Kaylee Spaney, uh, one of the main actresses here, 
you know, she's had some good roles. I, I think she's going to be able to, uh, to, you know, be a solid uh, contribution here as well. So, again, we don't know too much about the plot or anything yet for this. There, I mean, there is, a, you know, it says young people from a distant world must face the most terrifying life form in the universe. But, I mean, come on, we it, that sounds like any alien movie. So, as far as details, we don't know too much, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited about Fede Alvarez. So, bring it on. Uh, hopefully I don't find any eggs um, every uh, just leading up to that movie, Brad, because Brad all knows about how I can pick the best eggs. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> but, uh, but no, uh, I will mention that movie later on, but when? <clears throat> Stay tuned. So, Brad, I'll go ahead and go to my number eight. And this one I'm very interested in, and that is Smile 2. Uh, just because who would have thought that the original Smile uh, that came out, I believe, Brad, two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. Man, this whole Smile uh, just... What it is now and how people actually were really surprised. Uh, and what gets me excited about this movie, Brad, is the director, uh, Parker Vint, is coming back to direct the sequel. And our first cast announcement person is going to be Naomi Scott, uh, which I am a fan of hers. Uh, she played uh, Princess Jasmine in the live action remake of Aladdin. And she was also the Pink Ranger in the uh, Power Rangers. Uh, co- I wouldn't say it's a remake, but it's like this modern era's uh, Power Rangers live action movie and i think she just does a very good job of what she does and i this will be my first time seeing her in a horror movie and hopefully uh you might never know a performance like this we could have a feature screen queen and she'll want to come back to the horror genre so i'm excited for her i'm excited for parker finn i'm excited just to see how much like more of a smile we can get out of this movie so number eight smile two you better be using that mug over there when you're watching it too all right, number uh, number seven for me, uh, it's going to be Quiet Place Day One, man. Um, I, I don't really know what to expect. John Krasinski is no longer going to be directing, uh, but that's I mean, again, I'm not too concerned about it. The guy they have, Michael Sarnowski, uh, or Sarnowski, or whatever you want to call him, the big Valboski, I don't care. Um, he's the he's the guy that directed Pig a couple years ago, um, back in 2021 with Nicolas Cage. Um, he's a very talented director. So I. I from from based on seeing Pig, um, I don't know what else he's done. I haven't seen any of these other movies, but I, I could say that this movie will probably be <laughs> a little bit more character driven. Uh, it'll be uh, you know thematic. I think it'll be uh, you know somewhat artistic. Um, so I think that's a good thing because I think you know it would have been easy for them to find some like you know cheap ass director to come in and do some you know oh just do some jump scares and I don't think we're gonna get that with this. I think it's going to be a good made, uh, a well-made movie. So I'm excited to see it. Um, again, I don't know. If, you can't beat what John Krasinski did in that prequel portion of Quiet Place 2, I don't think, as far as, you know, because you already knew the characters and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it could be awesome. It, you know, it could just be a whole movie of that stuff. And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be great, I think. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, so let me go ahead and go to number seven here. And that is, and you're probably going to be disappointed, Brad. And for that, I must apologize. My number seven is going to be Saul 11. Uh, just for the fact that, um, first, I was very surprised with the major success of Saul 10, and I'm very happy for that franchise. But now we're just we're at the point now where we're doing what we normally do in the saw franchise is we rush to get a whole movie out there uh just you know with the success that you want to continue that success but i don't want to sacrifice that success with lowering the quality where we go from here are we going to go the hoffman direction are we going to keep going with uh this whole uh john kramer versus cecilia kind of story and all that like i have no idea like we don't have like clear writers we don't even know who's directing this movie yet so like there's just still a lot of questions but i'm still have a lot of curiosity about this movie and i'll be there day one so brad my number seven is going to be saw 11. i like the pick birdie i like the pit uh, i'm good glad to see it's on there um so for me uh my number six is nosferatu robert eggers man Ooh, um, that low i can't believe that well no i'm really looking forward to it but listen i just don't know um you know, it, it might end up being it, it's one of those that could be my favorite movie of the year or it could be really weird. And I don't like it that much. I don't know. It's it, it all kind of just depends on, you know, and I want Robert Eggers to bring his weirdness and, you know, his, you know, his weird ass shit to it. I, I do want that. Um, but also, you know, just I don't know. It's it's up in the air. Nonetheless, it kind of, you know, this one has moved up and down a lot for me. I really am looking forward to it. But at this these top five, I'm, I'm really excited to, to see. So. Uh, that's why it dropped but it, again i'm really excited for all these this one i think uh 
has a really good I, I, like I said in the in the show the other night I think Robert Eggers is the perfect person to bring back Nosferatu I think he's probably like the best person for it so I think they got the right director um obviously you got Bill Skarsgård in there you got Willem Dafoe excited to see what they can do um in the movie I think it's going to be creepy I think it's probably going to be his scariest movie since The Witch um I would say that's probably an easy safe bet to make so I'm hoping that all that's true enough if it's as good as I think it's going to be it's it's not going to be number six or maybe at the end of the year it's going to be way higher than that but again I just want to temper expectations I don't get too excited about it number six it is oh dude you know what i do not blame you man uh so do not blame me at all so my number six uh is going to be uh for what i actually heard the other night uh actually <coughs> um, as per this recording of last night on fear freaks uh Braden and destiny talked about this movie and i totally slipped my mind and how could it slip my mind some shame on me my number six brad is going to be the wolfman directed by lee Winnell. uh and why this movie is very important and it was going to be very exciting about this is lee Winnell nail did the very incredibly not talked about enough and underrated and in my opinion underappreciated the invisible man that came out in 2020 before the global bastard really hit so i didn't feel like it got his fair chance at the box office of to get that success but a lot of people who do watch it, the movie of invisible man really loved it and enjoyed just the aspect of like bringing these classical universal monsters but bringing them like to modernize them and the wolfman's going to be no different so i'm excited to see what lee Winnell does uh, with this whole classic creature of the wolfman and uh, christopher abbott i believe is going to be the wolfman it was originally supposed to be ryan gosling which i think that was perfect casting but you know what i think lee with Nell. He's just so good at getting his um, actors and actresses to really commit to their roles and to bring the best out of them for their roles. So I think Lee, Lee Winnell is going to do a great job on that. And I'm excited and I cannot believe I forgot to talk about this movie the other night. So my number six is The Wolfman. You know, there's a couple of movies we didn't talk about the other night. This next one, my number five is one of those as well. And as soon as I saw it, I got really excited about it. And I cannot believe we don't know anything else about it. And I honestly was like, oh, this, there's no way this thing is still happening. But I just saw an article from like a week ago. It's still on. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be uh, right. Radio Silence. Radio Silence has a monster movie coming out. Universal monster movie coming out. Yes. Uh, in April. Starring Melissa Barrera. Um, so, I, yeah, I think I'm really pumped about it. I, obviously, we haven't seen anything yet. And that, they did the same thing with Ready or Not. We didn't get the trailer for that until like a month before it came out. So... You know, I think it's going to be uh, pretty awesome, though. I think the original title, it, you know, they had a title come. It, this, it doesn't have an official title now, but I think at one point it was labeled like freaking Dracula's daughter or something like that. And mm -hmm. there's a group of kids getting kidnapped and one of them ends up being Dracula's daughter. And I, I don't know. It sounds cool. It sounds like something that's going to be fun for them to tackle. And, you know, they've they've not proven us wrong thus far as far as their ability to direct a fantastic movie. So easily number five for me is, is that. And hopefully we'll learn more about it soon. <laughs> awesome buddy awesome and dude i can't wait and i'm more important i'm excited for melissa barrera because this is actually going to be her like her first big film since the whole screen fiasco so hopefully she gets all the success in the world on that so brad here we go now it's top five time these are the ones that i'm like super stoked for like jack to the nines and jack to the tits so let's go into it so my number five brad is going to be a quiet place day one you kind of talked about this so i'm not going to add too much more into it i am disappointed that uh john krasinski is not going to be directing this movie but uh i'm still excited about the concept and just do, taking a little what we call a side quest which brad you know all about those side quests my friend uh so just to do a side quest and plus we're getting uh, an amazing cast in this movie that's uh what i am very excited for joseph quinn's gonna be in this uh i can never pronounce her name but pretty much the girl that pretty much dominated in us that me that main lead actress she's gonna be in this uh and much more so i'm very excited for it so i'll end it at that my number five is a quiet place day one good pick number four for me maxine ty west the third installment of this ex uh, trilogy um really excited for it uh I, again we haven't seen much on it yet we know the plot we know kevin bacon's in it that's all i need mia goth of course is in it as well um she's the lead but you know i saw kevin bacon too and i'm like you know i'm there um i'll probably wear a speedo just in his honor but anyway um i'm really excited to see it though i you know set in los angeles in the 80s 
Uh, perfect setting for it. I think Ty West is going to bring that atmosphere that he does best. No, 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 no. I don't know if any director in the horror genre brings as much, uh, you know, of, a, of an atmosphere as he does. He, at least he's in the top, you know, tier with everybody else. He's, that's, that's not necessarily true, but he is in that top tier for sure. Um, and yeah, I think having that setting in, the, in Los Angeles is going to be great. Again, this is one kind of like Nosferatu. It could go either way. It could be higher at the end of the year. It could be lower. But right now, I just I don't know exactly what you know it's going to be. I don't know exactly how you know if it's going to be super scary or if it's going to be just like a you know more of a thriller. I don't know. So for now, it's four. Again, it has potential to be one, two by the end of the year. Um, so I'm excited to see it. I can't wait for it. It's been one I've been waiting on for a couple of years now. God, if we could ever get a damn trailer for it, that's all I want in my life is a freaking trailer. Give me something, freaking um, A24. Give us something. So let's see here, Brad. Uh, my number four is going to be Alien Romulus. Uh, you've already talked about this already. Uh, I'm mainly excited for this just because this will be my first Alien movie in the theater. To see the Xenomorph being <laughs> brought back to the big old screen uh, it's going to be super freaking exciting. Uh, and I cannot wait for it. And plus, Fe Fetty Alvarez is going to be in this or directing this movie. Brad, you mentioned that before. But what I like about him directing this movie is because he kind of had that bad rap with being involved in the mess that is the texas chainsaw massacre from 2022 and i'm glad he dodged that bullet and did this project instead so that's why i am hoping he succeeds so he can get that negative from the past so we can look for a bright future and plus from what i heard uh, the last thing about this movie i from my understanding this is supposed to take place in between alien and and aliens uh that is from what i understood that's kind of like the timeline they're supposed to be aiming for and uh, that actually gets me interested so i'm looking forward to the first alien movie in the theater on the big screen hopefully in imax maybe even 4d where the little uh freaking mini xenomorphs will freaking pop my back in that 4dx theater experience or maybe in the front so my <laughs> number four is alien romulus i like it man i i can't wait uh, number three, man, Art the Clown's back, and he's going to be giving Christmas gifts to all those that love him this year, and uh, I cannot wait for it. Um, I, You know, I love Terrifier 2 so much. It was a huge surprise for me back in 2022. I, You know, I, the first one, I, you know, I thought it was fine. You know, obviously it has a couple great moments in it. I, You know, at the end of the day, I didn't love the first one. The second one, I did. Uh, we watched it again on the channel, you know, last month or month, month or two ago. Uh, we mm -hmm. had a, a lot of fun with that. Um, and... Yeah, I'm just looking for. I think seeing art at Christmas time is just going to be a blast. I think it's going to be a Christmas classic as far as a you know a you know, Christmas war movie. So can't wait to see it, and I hope they just keep amping it up from the last time, and it gets crazier and crazier. And Chris Jericho comes back, maybe pops a lion tamer on somebody. We never know, but you know, I just I I you know the walls, man, the walls of Jericho. So, but at the end of the day, man, this is easily one of the one I'm most excited about just to see what uh, the uh, uh, Mr. Leon. Damien Leon is going to do with it. Um, can't wait, Matt. Arm bar. Uh, if Chris Jericho doesn't pull an arm bar, I'm not sure. I will probably want my money back. But, dude, good pick. Uh, so let's go ahead and I believe I am at my number three now. So let's go ahead and go to my number three, Brad. And that's going to be Nosferatu. Uh, when I heard the man, the myth, the legend of Robert Eggers uh, going to direct this classic, I was all I was on board immediately about it, and as you all know, uh, for my fright night uh, for fright fight uh, tournament, we did put Nosferatu in the best horror movie of all time tournament. Even though that was the most difficult watch movie of all time for me, because it was just again made in the twenties. Now we get to bring it all the way back here in twenty twenty four. We got the perfect director, we got the perfect technology, and we got the perfect cast member to play uh, Count Olak. Um, it's freaking uh, Bill Skarsgar. So that's what gets me excited about that. I think Robert Eggers is going to nail it, and I think he needs a big win after the Northmen, which I know. Oh, Brad, you enjoyed, uh, you really liked The Northman. I was uh, kind of like on the opinion of like, this is a good movie, but I feel like uh, someone else should have directed it, not Robert Eggers, because Robert Eggers' his style is more towards The Witch and now Nosferatu. I think that's where he belongs, in my opinion. So I'm looking forward to seeing him going back to his horror roots of what made him a success. And I think Nosferatu is going to be that success. So my number three, Nosferatu. Good pick. Uh, number two, for me, man, you talked about it earlier. Saw 11. 
And this is one kind of like the opposite, man. Like the more that news comes out about this, I mean, it has potential to drop. Because yeah, I don't know who's directing it yet. I don't know who's writing it. I don't know who's going to be in it. I don't know if Pope Tobin Bell's going to be in it. I don't know if Mark Coffin's going to be in it. I think he will be. I think they got to have him in there. Um, you know, Amanda and all that stuff. I don't know where they're going to set it in the franchise. We don't know any details yet. But I know one thing for sure is I love the fuck out of Saul 10. And yeah. you know, just because Saul 11 is coming out next year, that doesn't concern me. I mean, Scream 6 was better than Scream 5. It came out the year after. Um, and it, actually less. It, it wasn't even a year. Um, so I uh, actually it was a year and two months. I just re- yeah, it was a little extra. But either way, um, nonetheless, I you know, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. They used to do all back to back. And I, you know, I like most of the franchise. Again, I just don't know anything about it. So if it comes out and we get some shit director and, you know, fucking some writer who's never, then yeah, it's probably going to drop a little bit. But I, I'm coming off the, the high of Saul 10. I'm excited to see where they're going to go. I'm excited to see what they're going to do next, how they're going to top that. If Tobin Bell comes back, it's probably going to stay right here in place at number two. Um, see if he can crank out another badass Saul movie. Yeah, because that would be cool. And, and if they follow that same kind of timeline they're, they're, they were in with Saul 10, I'm good with that. Because, you know, they left some loose ends at the end. Uh, they left, you know, the, the ending was a little bit left open for, for more movies. So uh, excited to see where it goes. I hope it turns out as good. I, it probably won't be as good as Saul 10, but I hope it's at least in the same ballpark. I hope they can mm-hmm. continue that story and, and go from there. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Awesome, dude. Uh, I know you're freaking anything Saw related. You're going to be freaking having it very high on your most anticipated list. So I figured it would be there, and I'm glad that that it is. Uh, my number two, Brad, you've already mentioned it, is our boy Art the Clown, Terrifier 3. Uh, and put freaking Art the Clown, one of the most brutal um, horror villains of this modern era. And we're going to put him into a very peaceful holiday of Christmas. Are you freaking kidding me? And plus, we're going to get some controversy at the beginning, like the first five or ten minutes of this movie i gotta know what freaking all that's all about and we're also bringing back freaking lauren lavera uh and also uh who's going to return playing as sienna shaw and her little brother i forget that actor same something elliot but he's coming back as well so i'm kind of curious to see uh what direction they go with those two particular characters next uh and kind of like what how are they feeling after uh, the events of terrifier 2 uh so definitely looking forward to terrifier 3 but it is not the most anticipated movie there's one more that outbeats it but it is strongly at number two for terrifier to, or three. Uh, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, okay, number one for me. We did miss it the other night. That's Wolfman. Lee Winnell, man. Uh, honestly, forgot this was coming out next year. That's why we didn't talk about it the other day. But then again, I was watching, I was doing the list. Um, it hasn't even gone through production yet, but, you know, they're going to have to go through um, all of that and get it, you know, post production, all that stuff in a pretty quick turnaround period. But they can do it. Lee Winnell, man. He often gets compared to James Wan. In a lot of ways, I actually think he's better than James Wan. I think he has more style than James Wan. Um, I like... Give me fucking Invisible Man. Invisible Man is one of the best horror movies of the decade. Like, mm-hmm. like that's, good. that's what it is. It's got some of the best character moments in it. You know, uh, some of the stuff that they did in the movie was fantastic. You know, uh, so I'm excited to see what he's going to do next. He has not made a bad movie yet. Insidious 3 scary as hell it was really good you know it was it was a very underrated entry in the insidious franchise better than the second one that james Wan did um i'll take three over two all day uh you know you you move forward to fucking uh damn upgrade and that shit was one of the best kind of sci-fi thriller horror things that we've seen since fucking robocop it's brutal as fuck it's got that same damn kind of vibe to it as robocop but it's you know it's got that modern twist to it it's got you know, it's got. It's not afraid to get dark and gritty, and that's what I like about him. He, you know, he, he'll do that kind of stuff. I just think stylistically, he's got a lo- little bit more going on than one. And seeing what he did with Invisible Man, I'm excited to see what he can do with Wolfman. And I think, you know, it, you know, it has potential to be my favorite horror movie of the year, if not my favorite movie of the year. We'll see what happens. But I think he's one of the best horror directors out there. And he doesn't do. He doesn't. He doesn't drop a movie all too often. But when he does, it's going to be a banger. You know, this is his first one in four years, so can't wait to see it. Hell yeah, dude. And again, very excited to see what Lee Winnell does next. I actually like him being tied in into like kind of like 
uh, having his hands all over the Universal Monsters to combine it into his world. So I've, that's what I do like about that. So I'm very excited yet again for Wolfman myself. And I'm glad it's at your number one. And before I mention my number one, just in case if anyone is going to wonder, yes. And I should put this back in my honorable mentions. That's Beetlejuice 2. I didn't want to leave that out just because I know a lot of people are very anticipated for that movie with Jenna Ortega, Leona Ryder, and Michael the Keats man. Like, all that is great. It's just I am not as attached to the original as most of her, so that's why it does not crack my top ten. But I figure I mentioned that. My number one, though, and this is going to shock everybody, is going to be Winnie the Pooh uh, Blood and Honey 2. Get the fuck like, out Let me here. talk about no, this don't, Pooh bear. No, no, no don't even I talk know, about this. I'm, kidding, I'm joking, I'm joking. Of course, Brad, is going to be Maxine, man. How could it not be Maxine? The third movie in this amazing horror trilogy, which we're on path right now. If they nail Maxine, it could be considered the best horror trilogy of all time just because of what this trilogy offers is something different within the horror genre uh so like the first movie we get a full-on slasher movie the second movie we get a character study psychological movie uh and along with some violence but this one brad we're gonna get a ultimate what a lot of people's favorite within the horror genre who done it who did it who did it we don't know who did it, but we're excited to find out. And that was the one of the best things that really fully got me to put this movie to my number one most anticipated that this is going to be a who done it slasher film. Uh, Mia Goff coming back portraying Maxine, freaking amazing. Halsey in this movie, amazing. Kevin Bacon, Bacon's great with everything, uh, especially like you said earlier, Brad, with the tuxedos, uh, freaking uh, or the speedos, speedos tuxedo speedos you know what combine them both because that's how i that's how i'm gonna walk into theaters with a tuxedo shirt and with my speedo on uh then i might get kicked out and not watch the movie so i'm gonna avoid that i'm so looking forward to this this is going to be great i want a damn trailer right now <coughs> a24 and i'll leave it at that number one absolutely is maxine i love the pick birdie i love it yeah, absolutely. So, guys, that is our freaking top 10 most anticipated horror movies of 2024. We are looking for one hell of a year uh, for horror movies. And let's freaking continue that momentum train uh, with awesome horror movies from the 2020. So, I want to ask you guys, and we'll get on out here. What are some of your most anticipated horror movies of 2024? And also, what did you think about me and Brass List? Did we get the majority of them right? Is there something that we forgot to mention and whether we're freaking dumb? Like when he blew blood and honey. Let us yeah, know. Don't even mention it, dude. <laughs> Sorry, get that discussion rolling. Why am I doing this? If you want to us find the good reels, all of our socials are right down there in the description. Go down there and check it out, man. The Patreon's going to be down there as well. Give it a gander. Dude, give it a gander, and without further ado, I'm just going to sit back, relax, and eat my jar of honey and watch Winnie the Pooh. Don't do it. Don't watch it. <laughs> no!